Yeah, it's crazy out here, y'all. For sure. Hopefully, everybody having a wonderful day, though. That's all that matters. Feel me? I'm having a pretty good day. My dang on self. <laughs> That's my man. Hold on, let me get you in, bro. Lava. Mr. Love, there he is. There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct honor <laughs> and a privilege to be here and to interview this man who has 20 years in the business. Man. Got a brand that's, a that's on the charts right now that's killing the game. He don't stop. He don't quit. You can't hold him back no matter what the label is. <laughs> What's up, brother? Yo, man, it's so good to see you, Ed. Man, it's a blessing, bro, to be doing this thing for 20 years, like you said. And, hey, I got to give kudos to you guys, man. You know, I've been rocking with you for so long. You know our personal rock. You feel what I'm saying? But Absolutely. at the end of the day, I felt like the people needed something more in music. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I wasn't trying to create the, a will, a new will. You know what I'm saying? I was just trying to to, to remind the youth what real R and B is. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying with this album? So you've been you've been a, you've been one of the premier dudes in R and B for a long time. And before you came out, there was a lot of different R and B artists out there. What made you decide? You know what? I'm gonna put myself to this business, and I'm gonna create music that's gonna last forever. Well, it's the love of music. You got to think about it, okay? Let's just be honest. The The way we came up listening to music, it wasn't about a record on the charts, a hit record. You know what I'm saying? We we listened to body of work. That's the only way we knew to listen to music. You feel what I'm saying? So that's what I always tried my best to give people, man, was a body of work. You start going back to the spinners. You go back to Marvin Gaye. You go back to Smokey. Them people gave you body of work. So I I tried to to vibe off of what they was doing and not just having a oh that that joint it's gonna be around for six months, but after that anybody gonna care about it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's not music to me. Absolutely. None of your music has been uh what I call a one hit quarter. You've always been to to put out great music and and great melodies, great subject matter. What was it that made you say I can be professional because there's a lot of people that can sing but a lot of people don't have that urge to become professional with their music what was it with you that said I'm going to take this from wherever I am right now professionally well I think it was more of just being true to myself man you know and when, when the first single you ever heard from me was separated that came from my heart bro I got my heart broke you know what I'm saying okay. she was, I was 17 she was 24 Wow. You know what I mean? So it was like, you wow. Too. Like, you too, huh? Separated hey, bro, from my you know jam I mean? because, you know, I, music, I, music you have to be able to relate to. And I can relate is. to that, man, because I was uh, 19 and engaged to a young lady that should remain nameless because I won't blow up. But right, she, right. She, she, she made a dummy move and gave me the key to her crib. And I was out juking one night with my boys, doing what I was doing and Ran up in her crib with my key and found her in the bed with another dude, bro. See, see, that is. See, so you understand? You understood what separated was. You yeah, understood. And I've been, you know, I've been through a divorce, so I absolutely understand what separated was. When did you first start singing, and when did you figure out, yo, I can sing like Pharrell? Well, you know, I was, I, I was a big fan of my uncle. You know what I'm saying? And um, he he had a group in Ohio, and they used to actually perform in my basement. And my mom would have me clean up all of the sweat after they left. So I smelt the music. You feel what I'm saying? So um, after that, you know, I was a huge fan of his. And one day I just walked past, and I, I started singing a little something. He said, Yo, nephew, man, you got it, bro. That's all I needed, Ed. That's all I need. I ain't care nothing about if anybody in the industry said I didn't have it. By him telling me I had it, bro, I was done. I was good. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I can, and then he told me, he pulled me to the side. He said, listen, nephew, he said, you got what it takes to take what they got. Bro, he giving me nuggets. 
They That's giving cool. me nuggets, bro. You, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I'm like, yo, I don't, I, I don't have any fear in this industry at all. Like, you know what I'm saying? My uncle was telling me I have what it takes to take what they got, bro. But so I always stick with that. Coming in when you came in, there was a lot of people. Man, come on, man. Come on, don't do that, man. It, it was it was a lot, bro. It was an iceberg of R and B standing. <laughs> Chipped your way in, man. How did how did you manage to chip your way in? Tell me the story of Avant talking to his uncle saying, Yo, you got that. So Avant landing a record there. Well, it was more of my father riding me around in his truck and telling me, if you really want to do this, he would he would ride me around and he would play blues. I would have to listen to Johnny Taylor, mm. uh ZZ, ZZ Hill, you know, the all the great group. He said, You hear those stories? He said it means something to them, to me. He's like, every time I listen to it, it means something to me. He said, I want your music to mean something to somebody. So I, I, I got nuggets. I got these people giving me nuggets around me, bro. So right. he's saying, you just can't be in the studio cutting anything. You know what I'm saying? It's got to penetrate the soul. So that's what I tried to do. And that's what really, you know, I found out after a while. Because at first I was like, man, nobody want to hear your heart and pain. But that's exactly what people want to hear. It's therapy. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you can talk about making love. People people love to make love. Or you can talk about heartache and pain. And people love for you to, he to hear that from people. So that's what I try to do, man. I just try to, you know, get these nuggets from these greats, man, and, 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 and make it happen, bro. Uh, you mentioned one of the greats like Johnny Taylor who made an amazing... Oh, man. Come on, bro. Up to listening. Who's making love to you? Come on, man. He, he has so many, though, bro. Like, I used to be riding around in this pickup truck with my daddy. And I'm just listening to all the cheating that Johnny was going through. And my daddy was doing the same thing, you dig? So <laughs> it was just, it, it's reminiscent. And I love it, though. That's that's what real music is, man, for real. What, what year did you get signed? And who were you signed to first? Uh, wow. When I first when I first was really dibby and dabbing in the, in the game, I was signed to uh, my own record label at the time but it was uh it was something else it was called um, um pay town management mm -hmm. but then i got signed in 2000 to the big label and i was with magic johnson I, I came through with magic johnson in 2000 but wow. i've been hustling i've been hustling since like 95. oh wow i was trying to get in you already know it was a gamut of it was a gamut of r&b at that point man you had r kelly you had babyface you had luther vandross you had um um and d'angelo you had Joe Thomas. Man, it was popping, bro. Absolutely. It was popping. And not to mention the R&B groups that was out there. That's what I'm saying. It was popping. And it was like one thing I knew because I got the comparison of R. Kelly. So one thing I knew, I had to keep my my, my voice out there so people know who I was because I wanted them to know who I was at one point. It was cool. I was cool with the comparison and all that stuff. But I wanted them to know that this man stands on his own. You feel what I'm saying? So that was one of my main things to do. That's why I stayed out there as much as I did. What was the r &B, what was the music business like in your city? Because you're not from a major city. You're from Ohio. Yeah, yeah, I'm from Ohio. I mean, you got to think about it, bro. I mean, you had the Ohio players. Okay. You know, you, so, so it was popping. You know, we had, a move, we, have, we had a movement. But at the end of the day, it was more of you had the OJs. And uh, you, you had um, o, uh, um, the IG brothers. They from Cincinnati, Ohio. So we had a we had a, a good a good run of great music, man, and soulful music. Uh, so I had I had to stand up on those guys' shoulders too. Right. Where did the name Avant come from, bro? That's my last name, bro. I thought it was cool. I th you know my first name is Myron, so somebody in the industry was already named Myron. Okay. He had a song called Destiny or something like that at the time. So I said, I'm about to go French with it. You dig what I'm saying? It's my last name. I might as well use it. You know what I mean? <laughs> my thing. I'm going to take my last name and make it do what it do. That is, baby. You were, know, we created. Were you surprised when you dropped Separated? Or did you know from the first time that you recorded it that that was going to be a hit? Well, I knew for me it was a hit. Because I was going through it, bro. I was feeling it. You know what I mean? So... I knew if people, if anybody had been through what I've been through and the, the hurt that I felt, it had a chance. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you know, everybody, you know, hindsight say, yeah, I knew, bro. It was popping. I already knew. Bro, I felt like it was coming from the heart. And if anybody felt the way I felt, 
I knew Ed was hurting, so I had a chance. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. There's a lot of us that was hurting at that time, man. Yeah. And you managed to tap in to a group of people that were going through the same thing that you were going through at the time. How did you take your hurt and translate it onto an on, or onto a well, that's what I found out. Like, you know, talking to my um, my manager at the time, his name was Eric Payton. He was like, yo, man, people want to hear heartache and pain, bro. They want to hear that. So that that's when I started writing the way I did. It was about, okay, either love or, you know, what, what you're going through in your life. Because it's to me, like I told you before, it's therapy, bro. It's really therapy. You know, some people need that so that they don't go do nothing crazy. Right. He's my fault, bro. But yeah, so you know that that is what really triggered the way I write songs now. So you know, you got that. Then you go from making good love. Then you might have read your mind. I remember I was in a, in, in a nightclub with uh, my manager Jay, and I was shooting pool. And girl walked past me like she wanted to eat me alive. You know, I'm on my like my third album. I'm feeling sexy as ever right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can read your mind, baby. You know what I mean? Right. Jay, Jay, like, what you singing? I said, be quiet, bro. I don't know what it is, but it's coming out. You know what I mean? So uh, God just blessed me to be able to write like that, man. So I'm, I'm happy for that. That That's funny, man, because when you first signed to MJJ, which was Magic Johnson's music, I was vice president of Magic Johnson. I I left and came, went back to New York to do more than radio on Power 105 and left wow. my job. Wow, it's crazy. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hopefully you would have signed me. Uh, after I remember listening to you when they brought you, when you know, my man brought you to see your man. I got this new artist named Avant. Crazy. I was like, play it. He played in my office. I was like, yeah, this dude is out of here. Like, I appreciate your voice it, bro. And your, <laughs> it, it never took, you never took lessons at all. It's just not, not at all, man. Not at all, bro. You know, it's just, it's, it's there. You know what I mean? And, um, Again, like I don't like to be boastful. You already know who I am. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just, I just thank God that you know I try to take care of as much as I can, take care of it, and and just give people great stories. And, and and you know, even with the new album, you know, I started off with "You Don't Love Me No More." Not only am I talking about a woman, I'm talking about the music game too. See, one thing I love about mm. hip hop and R and B, hip hop is really where you wordplay really counts. You know what I mean? Your wordplay nice, you can make both exists you know what i mean so what i tried to do was i tried to pull from the wordplay of hip-hop by writing this 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 uh song you don't love me no more you know what i mean and i say listen how can we say that when how can you say that we're not an item i know i made mistakes maybe two or three you made it your business to stop fighting it's all messed up now you don't want me you see what i'm saying but i'm talking about a young lady and i'm talking about the game of r&b like, you know what I mean? Right now, I didn't know if they really wanted to hear real stories from R&B or they just wanted to, you know, hear I was in the club, sipping up, chilling. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I was confused. You know what I'm saying? So I was saying, look, you don't love me no more. Where's, where's the love? And, you know, being out here and people showing that they got the love still, man, that's, that's priceless to me, bro. It's priceless. Bro, bro, the, 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 the music world is never going to stop loving you. And game is an amazing, amazing thing. For me, people had to remind me that today is actually the thirty second anniversary of the premiere of your on TV Rats for Fat. Wow man, God bless, bro. I was just thinking about y'all, man. Dre and I came the next How Dre doing? He's 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 battling some illness, but he's doing well. And, and that okay. next day upon, Dre and I came and that changed my life. How did separate life? Man, separated changed everything. You know what I mean? It changed my address. It changed my mama's address. You know what I mean? It was it was a blessing. It changed, you know, the girl, like you said, I, she would remain nameless, but I know it, it, it hit her some type of way too. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it was coming from an honest spot. One thing about R&B is, man, you have to be vulnerable. That's what we knew an R&B to be. You know what I mean? A lot of times it's not you going through it, but you got to be vulnerable for the people. It's therapy, bro. You got to be able to help the people with what you're, what you're talking about. 
He mm. can't be like, and it's okay, you know what I'm saying, to have a little, you know, people say, how do you feel R&B today? I think it's in a good spot, bro. I really do. I think so because if from the 1990s to 2020, we was doing a hardcore R&B the way we was from 1990 to 2000, bro, if we was doing that, we would be tired of it. We right. would be tired of it. So we needed that break. We needed that break of, okay, it was, to me, it's like disco. We needed that break to find out what real music is again. And you, bro, you speak directly to the hearts of so many people, but more directly to a female fan base. Did you realize, did you realize well, that people well, get separated more than the males got it? Well, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, think about it. Women, in a, in a lot of instances, you know what I'm saying? Ed, the truth is, man, the stuff that we do, it's we from wild boys, man. We That's some wild boys. How, and wild women, you, how wild were you, bro? When 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 you got that hit record and your name was ringing bells, how wild were you, bro? Hey, bro. Come on, man. Come on, <laughs> man. You know, <laughs> you know, these are these are all questions that people say, yo, you interviewing the bar, you gotta ask them this. Okay, yeah, it it was real, bro. I I can say that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I got a residence right now with a with a beautiful home, you dig so. I'm, I'm gonna say it was real. I'm it just gonna keep it like that. Real because I it was, my, hey. hey, when you're famous and nobody tells you what fame is like, come on, man. You gotta understand everything is at your back and call. I've right. seen you at a couple parties. Absolutely. You dig what I'm saying? We didn't, we didn't, we didn't been wild together. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> at the end of the day, we still respect it, though. We respected, right. we respected who we was around and, and what the game was. We understood it's a game. It's a game and it has to be played a certain way. When did you realize that you were a prolific writer? Wow. You know what? That's a great question. Um, I was um, actually, I never really knew until like the third album, I want to say, or the fourth album. Whenever I, I ventured off from my man, Steve Huff, because I was, I was just with one producer for like years. Yeah. Shout out to Steve Huff, too. Shout out. That's Shout my out homie, bro. Steve. Steve gave That's you my man. Yes, he did, bro. man. He gave me something special. So I didn't know exactly how much I was respected as a writer until I start vent when I ventured out and I started working with the underdogs and I started working with uh, Rodney Jerkins and and they was shout like, yo, man, we man, Nobody shout out. Likes to talk about the underdogs and Rodney Jerkins. Come you on, watch man. these verses like I watch like yes. another forty minutes. We got Rick Ross versus Two Chains coming up. But Dope. nobody is challenging the underdogs. Nobody is challenging. Rodney you can't. Jerkins. You can't, bro. Like you gotta think about it. Come on, man. Like it's they gave us sounds that uh uh that that will never be duplicated again, bro. Never. So right. back to what I was saying. What happened was I started working with those guys. They're like, yo, man, huge fans coming in. I come into Rodney's on session. He got cameras set up like like I'm Whitney Houston. <laughs> you did what I'm, doing? I'm like much respect, my bro, and that's what I love about the last verses we had too with Snoop and um D DMX. The mutual it's respect, how, right? It's how DMX, well, actually, how Snoop was celebrating the whole movement, and you know what I'm saying? And DMX, they was celebrating it, man. And it's like I understand it in that, in, you know, when it's like that, I understand it, I get it. Right. But when you're pitting each other against each other, it's like, no, we did this for the fans, like. I never had a problem with you, bro. You right. know what I'm saying? So it's I think, not, it, it, you know, it has to be changed in that aspect. But other than not, that. It, when, when I look at verses, and I would love to see you do one because you got hits out the wazoo, bro. Man, when, man. I look, when I look at verses, I look at it as a celebration of the culture. Yeah, and, it and is. The culture it is. of great music that you brought to us is absolutely phenomenal, bro. And, Thanks, and bro. you should be absolutely proud of yourself. You got another hit album under your belt. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. The that. only cat that I know that's been around longer than you that keep making hits is Charlie Wilson, bro. Hey, man. I'm blessed, bro. That, hey, look, man. And that's Uncle Charlie. Like, again, even talking to him uh, for you, uh, about, about 10 years ago, he said, man, never stop writing. Never stop writing. Keep that pen going. And, uh, you know, that's, to me, that's what I'm going. Then I, um, I was actually in this play 
David Talbert, man. Shout out, shout shout out, out to David. David Talbert. Yeah, David, David Talbert. Talbert. If you're looking at this, I'm open when this COVID gets loose. Exactly. You know what I'm, I'm saying? open to play with you, brother. It's crazy. We was in, um, and I was, I was actually just getting off stage and coming back in, you know, because we was, we was on a break. And I get back to my room, and Stevie Wonder's dead. He, as soon as I hit the door, he like, what up, Avant? I'm like, wow, Stevie know who the hell I am. Like, that was amazing to me, bro. You know what I mean? And That's it was not- like, he said. He, right there, bro. Man, come on. He said, you want to sing Ribbon, Ribbon in the Sky with me? I said, hell yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, man, and that was, to me, that was like, a, a man, that was a milestone in my life, bro. Being on Absolutely. stage and Stevie Wonder asked you. I could see if I was just up there just, you know, being a cornball and like, yo, just singing out of No, he asked me to do this, bro. Wow. So that was amazing to me, man. It really was. Know, and that's when I, I knew that. that I was a writer that was respected. You know, you get it from Absolutely. Stevie, bro. Yeah. He co-signed you. You're a writer to be recognized. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You're a writer to be respected. What, ha- what, what have you learned that you feel like is really, really important to spread to anybody that's an aspiring artist or aspiring writer right now watching us on this live, what do you what 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 advice would you give? What did you learn? Love what you do. Love what you do, bro. Cause, I mean, love, you gotta love it to the point where in which it makes you happy to see the lights come on and see the microphone. You have to love it like that. You feel what I'm saying? Because one thing is for sure, if you can be true to you, the, the music gonna be true. It's gonna it's gonna happen. You have to be true to you, though. You know what I mean? I know a lot of artists right now, man, they hate what they, even though it might be a big record, they don't like the record. You know what I mean? For some strange reason, either they didn't write it or it's not the style they wanted to be up under. But if you love what you do and you're a writer like myself, I tell everybody I'm not ever worried about it being out of style because I'm a writer and I'm always listening to people, you know, having these issues or or in love and, I can write from that. God has blessed me to be able to give you my point of view of it. So I would just tell everybody, love what you do and keep God first. And, Bruh, and, and have, you, have you ever gotten to the point of where you said, fuck this, I don't want to do it no more? No, because I still love the game. I love the music. Like, you know, if for real, like, that's why it's kind of hard when everybody talk about the verses thing. I'm like, I never really think about another artist, bro. I, it's all about the people. When I when I say every time I see you, I get a bad vibe, and I see that woman in the fifteenth row crying, it ain't never about the next person, bro. Not not the next artist. I touch. I am touching hearts from everywhere, bro. To, to me, that's what it's all about. It's the therapy of what the music is, bro. You introduced us to Kiki Wyatt. Wow. How did that happen? Well, uh, shots out to my man Steve Huff again. It was crazy because uh, I used to be listening to um, what happens is, okay, my my sister would rock. Okay, she would sit on the floor. She would put a pillow behind her and she would rock back and forth to me, to the radio. You know what I mean? So but when I get sleepy, I would crawl up under and lay right on her lap and she would rock me to sleep, right? Okay. So. One day she was, you know, the, the song came on, My First Love. She would do this all the time. So we would hear this song, and I'm like, man, I love that song. I don't know what it is. I'm a youngster. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't know what that is. I said, when I make it, I'm going to do that song. Okay. She was like, she was like, boy, go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I reminded her that all the time. You know, she's like, I don't even remember me saying that. But I remember every damn thing. You dig what I'm saying? But I wanted to do that song. And um, I, I got to the studio one day, and I was like, yo, Huff, man, I want to do this song. He's like, well, that's a dope joint. I said, but I ain't got no female to do it with. He said, don't worry, I got somebody. And she was 14 years old, bro. What? He said, he say, man, he said, you ain't going to believe this. She she can't even get in the club, but she can blow, bro. I said, well, let me hear. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm thinking, man, he's crazy. Man, one take in it, bro. She took that in one take, bro. One take. Um, one take, man. I was like, wow. I didn't even know what the heck was going on, bro. I felt like this was a movie. Like I was in a dream, for real. I was that surprised. Like, man, this girl is amazing, bro. And, you know, from that point on, that's where the relationship rose from there. You know what I mean? Like, And it's like everybody want me to do an album with her. And I want to. Don't get me wrong. But the nature of it all is as much as people want to 
hit celebrate us, people want to criticize us too. So mm-hmm. I got to make sure it's right. I got to make sure we, we don't, we're not just doing the same song over and over because that's not going to be exciting. Right. You feel the plan? So it's got to come across right. And we've set the bar so high that we can't drop the ball at Absolutely. this point. My, so. my, my, my fans that said, hey, Ed, you, you talking to Avon today, you got to ask them, was there ever a real love affair between you and Kiki? Because y'all came around like it I was. I know, that crazy? No, nah, man, never. That was my little sister, man. Still is to this day. You know, but again, it is a love affair when it comes to that microphone, though, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, bro, I'm telling you, we get in there, I be trying my best to just hang on. Because she's right. so cold. You dig what I'm saying? I be trying to hang on, bro. <laughs> How does it feel, man, to have 20 successful years in the music business? A lot of people don't get that. You're not well, seeing people come and people go. Hey, bro, it ain't been 20 successful, bro. It's been some rough and tough times. But just to hang in there, man, it's, it's, it's a blessing. Like you said, it's so hard. I tell everybody, it's not – you shouldn't think of the big money in the beginning. That's what people got to understand. It ain't about getting a big check in the beginning. What it's all about is, and you know this as well as I do, staying in business, bro. Staying right. in business. That's right. That's what life is about, man. You got to stay in business. I know so it I sounds cliche, but people say it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And it really it, is. It really is. It really is. Because guess what? As long as you're putting out great product, and I tell everybody, sometimes I feel like a walking door salesman. I have to sell you on this product, bro. Right. I have to. So I have to. And when I'm in the studio, I tell them it's 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 not just a studio to me. It's it's sacred because I know when I when I re- when I come out of the studio, it will reach the masses. So it has to be talking about something to change right. somebody's life. Gotta and, I don't know if, and yeah, I don't know if a lot of people take that aspect, you know, from the studio. So you don't get that same vibe, you know, so. But that's how I do it, bro. Let me ask you a question, bro. You've made money in this business. What's the dumbest shit that you've ever bought that you look back on and say, why the fuck I buy that stuff? I, um, I bought a gamut of houses in the, in the hood that was hood houses, man. And it burnt me so bad, bro. You know I mean? <laughs> that was the dumbest thing I could have ever done. You know, um, that to me, that was one of the dumbest things. You know, but I had also I had somebody else running it. And it was just like, yo, what am I doing? I'm just losing money. Right. You know what I mean? And we've, we've all been through. That's why I tell everybody, if you're not willing to embarrass yourself, you're never going to be famous. You're never going to be successful. Because that's what it's all about. At this at this point in your at, at this point in your career, man, you do a show, people turn out like crazy. Are you are you still are you surprised by that? Are man, look, by that? every time I'm humble, bro. And then again, the beauty the beauty of it all is that um, when you're doing a show, I love to do show with the band. I, I I can't do that track show stuff. I'm just so past that. You know what I mean? But the going out with there with a the band and, and they know when they come and rock with me, I'm not going to stick with just the, the hits. I'm about to take you down memory lane, bro. I might do some Sam Cook. I might, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Because I know it, this is a show, bro. This is a show. People be forgetting about it. Like, yo, we're not robots. That, and, you know, being st- stuck behind the, 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 just the CD playing. That's that's robot action. I man, I got a show for you, bro. I got a show. Right. You leaving it all out there on the stage, huh? You got to, bro. Every night, I, I you know watching my man Charlie. Charlie, man, man, the, that man is amazing, bro. At his age, and also shouts out to Keith Sweat, getting it, bro. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I love Keith, the, man. Those guys, those guys show you that you know what hard work really does. You know what I mean? So. And, I have and, to. and how hard work pays off. Absolutely. That's it. That's it, bro. Tell, so I tell, me, tell me about this new tell me about this new album, man, because the music business has changed. It is, Everything's man. changed. It is. Tell me tell me about the 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 uh 
you know, your angst about putting out a new album. Was you worried about it? Or would you, or oh, you yeah. It, I tell everybody, man, if you feel, if you if I sit up here and lie and say, no, nah, I wasn't worried. No, nah, I was. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, I was trying to find the love. I didn't know what. I don't listen to radio no more, bro. I don't, because, I mean, it's five songs that they play. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, what can I, I can't get no inspiration from that. You feel what I'm saying? So what I did was I said, I'm going to put just a couple songs out just to see the vibe, you know, see what they vibing on. I put out Not Gonna Lose. That's a straight up hard, a man saying to his woman, listen, I don't care what we go through. I built a family in this house. Okay. I'm not going to let another man come in here and start whooping my kids and cussing you out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm right. not going to allow that to happen because at the end of the day, I'm really, I'm trying to protect you because I know what type of fly mouth you got. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm trying to protect you and my kids. So the joint is called Not Going to Lose, and it's got like an old school vibe to it. But um, I put that out, and the people was like, yo, I'm feeling that. Because I knew it was so left from what they was hearing on radio. You know what I'm saying? So at that point, I said, okay, I got I got a vibe of what they want to hear. And I, you know, I felt kind of confident about bringing music out again because it was a lot of people saying, no, bro, we looking for real R&B. It's just ain't nobody really trying to do that. They're right. trying to do R&B and hip hop. Right. You know what I mean? And I think we should keep that separate. I, I do. Yeah. You know, if we kept, but if we kept R&B and hip hop separate, we would have never had Mary J. Blige, though. Oh no! Um, yeah. Well, wait a minute. Let's let's say let's let's keep it one hundred. It it she have elements of hip hop. Right. Mary Mary J is she R and B, and that's because of Puff. Puff right. gave her the element of hip hop. But Mary right. is, you know, what I'm saying. I mean, think of all the records records that they sampled. It was straight R and B records. That's right. You know what I mean? So I, I respect the game. I understand what Mary J is, and Mary J is amazing, bro. That right there, that sister right there. You care who she gonna do verses with? Right. Ain't oh, no yeah, verse. Yeah. Ain't she yeah. gonna do it with herself? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> after, after all this time, man, how do you navigate yourself through the way things are changing with streaming and and all of that man, stuff? It's not hard it's, sales no more. You sold a lot of records, hard sales, yeah, bro. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, went to the store and bought Avon shit. I did. Hey, at the end of the day, though, Ed, one thing I have to give, I thank God for, bro, is that we're all able to transition. Right. Think about it. We came from, uh, um, uh, what was it called? You know what I'm talking about? In the in the Cadillacs, right? Eight tracks, eight tracks. Right. We came from eight tracks. We went from eight tracks to vinyls. See what I'm saying? We went from vinyls to t to um uh, tape, um, tape recording. Yeah, because. Then we went from there to CDs, and now we're in this whole virtual situation. Bro, we are able. That's why I tell people, don't get upset. But again, as we get older, we get set in our ways, and we don't want to learn. That's the thing. So I, I got a 17-year-old son. He just popped his head in here just to make sure my IG and everything is good. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and I have a 7-year-old daughter that's always – everybody lost a job but me. I am my daughter's – director on TikTok. Okay. I didn't tell so many dang old Barbies, bro. I ain't never touched <laughs> many Barbies in my life. But because I open myself to continue to learn, I'm cool with that. And and they're they're pushing me towards this new virtual world. And I mean I can see yourself. Like we all trying to learn this together, man. Absolutely. This, this and then with the pandemic, it's it's sprung on us so heavy, bro. I want to see you on the wheels too though. Absolutely. I want to see you spinning. <laughs> I want to see you spinning, bro, because I'm telling you, people don't know how you get down. You did what I'm yes, saying? Yes, I get down on the wheels of steel. Hey, I've been doing that hey, since I was 14 hey. and 57, so I've been see, doing this for saying. a while, bro. Man, I want to see you. I want to see you on the wheels on your on your, uh, your IG, man. Hey, I man, I can't, I, I can't wait until COVID lifts because I'm quite sure you're missing a lot of money because of COVID pandemic. Oh, you know what? Honestly... To be honest, man, I think this was perfect for somebody that got a project because what happens is I could be out and 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 I could be promoting a new album. But once I get on stage, all they want to hear is the old records. Right. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. they lose the focus of what the new thing is. 
Like right now, they they focusing on the new records, bro. So I, I, I can honestly say I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, I, I feel I feel for people that ain't got their stuff, you know what I'm saying? Right. But at the end of the day, we are the creative people. And I wanted to say this to you, Ed. I feel like the nine to five is actually systematic slavery. Mm. And I'm just being honest, totally Please honest. Explain, with you right brother. What do you mean by that? Well, the, the thing is this here. We are the creative people. I spoke that before. The truth is... We, how can you create when you, you're locked in a job for 40 to 50 years right. doing what other people tell you to do? We never get around to being who we were. We created to be. You know what I'm saying? Look at the pyramids and all that stuff overseas. We create. Black folks did that, bro. Absolutely. So you can't lock us in a job. If you, if you, if you, uh, if you, if you're saying to me, I'll pay you $50 an hour. I really have to look at myself and say, yo, bro, you work way more than that. Right. And somebody willing to pay you that. Yeah. So somebody somebody in the comments just said, by the time we get out of this pandemic, we will be absolutely familiar with your new album. So when you come love. out, you're going to be able to do that, man. That's love. How, That's how, how do you feel about what's going on right now socially? in this world with the Black Lives Matter music. What's your thoughts on that? We still haven't found, or any, well, not found, we know who did it, but nobody has been brought to justice on Breonna Taylor's murder. And I think that's very important to us. Again, let's go back to what I was just stating, bro. See, the reason why they want to get us back to jobs is because we are a movement. We're strong when we don't have something bearing us down. Absolutely. See, so that's where we're at right now. No, I ain't thinking about that. I want you to think about the movement and the change that we can create with this movement right here. I ain't thinking about you talking about my job is back up because you just trying to smoke and mirrors. That's the whole thing. It's about the smoke and mirrors right the now. The versionary right? tactic, tactics. That's I it, man. It's been going on forever. So, you know, my statement to everybody is I know you out there hurting and I understand it. And I am very, very um, I'm sad. that, this, But we got to get back to who we are. One thing one wise man told me, he said, listen, your boss will never pay you enough money to live next to him. Damn right. You see what I'm saying? You're damn right. So, and guess what? He don't even know how to do your job. <laughs> That's right. You feel me? So we got to gotta, gotta know our strength. We got to know our power. We are very powerful people, man. We are. But we got to stick together. For one, we got to put this thing together, man. We really do. And we got to quit asking people to fix our problem. Because our problem is we. Go ahead. You, you can't ask the oppressor to stop oppressing you. Because yeah, what, your oppression what, is their financial gain. So they're never going to stop doing that. Bro, that's something. Hey, hey, and you understand that. That's, so that's the, that's the language we got to spit to the people. We got to let them know, understand it. Why would they stop that? That's their check. That's the check. They 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 constantly cracking the whip. Right. That's what they're doing. Are you still married to the music, man? Oh man, so much, man, so much, man. It's crazy because uh, you know I was just humming some new melody. You know, my daughter be like, "Yo, daddy, you." She say, "It's funny because she listened to the new music. She only seven years old. She listened to the new new music. She like, oh, that's good." Then she hear read your mind because you know Jacquees did his version. She right. said, "Daddy, you." You much better than you used to be. <laughs> so you think John Queen's doing your music? She, hey you? man, you know, hey, she, she being honest. I can't be mad at that. You know what right. I'm saying? So you know, but that's the nature of music. It always, you know, it's gonna fall. Like you know, I use my man, um, T Sales. Um, everybody at T Sales. That's who I was in the studio with. Man, the man is crazy. He's from New York City. He's a young guy, but he has an old soul. Right. You know what I'm saying? We went in there and we just started rocking out, putting up real music, you know what I mean? So, shouts out to my man at T-Sales, everybody, for sure. How, and how, also, how, everybody... How did your 17-year-old son feel about being a Vaughn's son? Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy because he was, you know, even when I brought the project home to him, the new project, he's like, yo, yo, he was in the car with his girl, you know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, daddy, that's, that's cool, that's cool. And then, he was going through some stuff with his girl. He came back to me like, yo, daddy, 
oh man, I see why you be writing that stuff like that, man. Like the world, <laughs> like, I'm feeling. It. You see what I'm saying? So I said, hey, I told him everybody understand. You might not get in it again, but it, it's going to it's going to hit you. It's going to hit you, bro. But yeah, he you know, he cool with it, man. And um, he's he's uh he's actually taking photos of uh the teams playing sports. He's really into that. So I'm just trying to, you know, guide him in the right way, man, to let him know, hey, this world, being an entrepreneur is great. That's what you have to be. You know right. what I'm saying? I said, it's cool to work for someone for a minute, but you got to understand being an entrepreneur is what, what life is about. Right. So when, when this album is a hit right now, it charted crazy. I'm very mm -hmm. proud of you for that. Do you get more money from this album than you ever had being signed to a label? Ever in my life, bro. Wow. Ever yeah, you know, um, because I'm on my own label right now, so it's a blessing. But I, I do, I thank the labels for giving me the blueprint, let me ride in the passenger seat. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm just, I'm nudging them out the way. I'm driving. You feel what I'm saying? Because I didn't see, you know, how to do things and how not to do things. You know, even though we're in a new um, way of of selling music, yeah. You, hey, sometimes I have sleepless nights. Because I, I want to make sure the content is. Um, you know, I, I want to make sure the content is right. I want to make sure that people understand that we're coming from an honest space. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's that's what I'm pushing more than anything. Who who haven't you worked with that you would love to work with? Man, I um, I, I was blessed to work with. Let me tell you who I have worked with. I worked with uh Charlie Wilson, uh Ron Isley, Puff Daddy, um, Jamie Bree. I worked with uh oh man, just keep sweat. This is what I spoke on. Just so many, so it's hard to say who I would. You know what I mean? Like I, I went through the gamut of R&B. I would say more than anything, I wanted to work with Michael Jackson. Though. I did. I wanted to work with Mike, but you know. That can't happen. That dude was a beast, man. Oh, it, man he, it ain't no two ways about that. That That is a game Prince? changer. Him and Prince? Like it's, oh, man. Come on, bro. Amazing. How come you ain't never grabbed one of Michael Jackson records and did it over, bro? You know what? Mike costs so much money, man. You know, so much. <laughs> Mike you gotta, you gotta pay. Money. You got to pay to do a remake? Well, he will take half of your album, bro. Oh shit, Mike is a business. Yeah, Mike, man. Mike don't play, man. Mike is not playing, bro. So yeah, I thought about it, but I'm like, nah. And Mike, like, yo, even songs he ain't had nothing to do with. He like, yo. Let me get <laughs> if you if you had an opportunity and you was thinking about it, what Michael Jackson song would you do over? Man, bro, oh man. Um shucks. Uh I, I right now off my head. There'll be no darkness tonight. Oh, absolutely. Lady of my you life, bro. Said, lady of my That's life. right bro. up your fucking alleyway, kid. So let me, let you mentioned Prince. If you had, if you could do a Prince oh, record over, what would oh, you do? Ah, man. Oh, man, I can't even do Prince, man. Prince, oh, my God, I don't know. Prince was on a whole nother level because Prince was that octave. I can't even get there, bro. I can't even get there. <laughs> but I you know, even he, he wrote... He wrote so much shit for other people. You can flip that. He did. And do it your way. Oh yeah, I would have to. I would have to really study and then flip that. But um, yeah, man. Shouts out to the greats. That's what I'm saying, bro. Uh, again, I tell everybody, you can't say that there's a king of R&B. It's been way too much and too many greats, bro, doing this thing, man. Right. Right. It's, I mean, now, come on. Let's, you know, we all we all gotta hold this torch and keep it lit. That's right. Absolutely. You mentioned Keith Sweat earlier. Keith, Johnny, and, mm -hmm. and the late great Gerald Levert did LSG. Yeah. That's super yeah. Group. Who would be an Avant supergroup? Oh, man. See, y'all y'all playing. You and two other it's... singers. Yeah, I'm bringing the questions, brother. I ain't well, around. well they, they would be dead. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't work. You know what I'm saying? Because I would, I would, like you said, Johnny Taylor. I love Johnny Taylor's voice, man. I even love Sam Cooke. Right. I love Marvin Gaye. Like these people that's gonna bring that that soul, that true soul, right. and we're gonna push each other, you know, they, to come with the great content. To right. me, that's you know, that's what real R&B is, bro. Uh, absolutely. So that's Sat right there. S A T. Sam Avant and Taylor. <laughs> there you go. There you go, baby. <laughs> absolutely, bro. Listen, man, it's been a pleasure to sit here and talk with you, man. It ain't nothing but love for you, man, and. 
And it's wonderful to see after 20 years that you have galvanized your fan base and they are buying your new album. Tell everybody the name of the album, too, so they can get it. All these people on here watching us right now. And Yo, I'm everybody out there, it's your man, Avant, and please pick up Can We Fall In Love. Mm. That's a new album. And the reason why I named it that is because it's a lot of people in lust. And there's two differences. You know what I'm saying? Being in love is you being vulnerable. You, 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 you're splitting everything. You're trying to make sure th this things works. But being in lust, hey, look, I'm going to holler at you next, you know, next time I talk to you. It's, right. it's easy. You know what I'm saying? So that's the difference. And also, I want to send everybody out. Listen, everybody follow my man at Ed Lover. Please, Please, everybody do. Follow Please, my I need man. A million follow. Got, I need a million. Yeah, and you, it's coming, bro. It's coming. Get get on them wheels, too. You got to get will, on them wheels. I promise you. Please, do. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm going to be looking. I ain't going to do it tomorrow night because tomorrow night is date night with the wife. So maybe hey, Saturday. Hey, I respect that. I respect that. Absolutely, man. And the best to you and your entire family, your son Thank you, bro. and your daughter, everybody in your family, man. Keep bringing us the great music. And shout out to my man, Big J. Yeah. Put this together, man. That's my man. God friend. bless y'all, man. I love you, bro. For sure, God show. bless you, man. Keep talking to your people, Bond. Thank you for having me and allowing me this opportunity to interview you, bro. And Indeed, everybody. everybody Ed, Ed Lover. Ed, Ed Lover. And check out Come On Son, the podcast, because I am definitely putting this on my podcast, bro. I love you. I respect the shit out of you. And I'm going to go back <laughs> to drinking the scotch and smoking these cigars, bro. <laughs> All right. I'm going to write a song about that, Ed. Thank you, my brother. I love you, man. Be well. Love you too, baby. All right, brother.